Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions was a good video game and I liked it. As I've scoured the internet looking for entertainment and traveled the toilets of Twitter takes, I find very little people talking about this game. I liked it and I thought it was pretty cool. I loved playing as three other Spider-Men, and the three chosen from the Spider-Men available at the time were really well picked, Ultimate being my favorite, Noir being second, 2099 placing third, and Amazing being my least favorite in terms of gameplay. They even brought back old beloved Spidey actors to play each version of Spider-Man. Except Dan Gildazan. I... I don't know why they picked him. I feel like Reno Romano would have been a much better choice. He has already played a version of Spider-Man that's in a dystopian 2099-like future, and he played a younger Batman too, and I, I personally really love the Batman cartoon. I thought it was really good. And I think a combination of his performance in the Batman cartoon and his Spidey voice would work well for a 2099. It just baffles me that they completely skipped over a beloved Spidey actor for... Dan Gildazan. So in reality, there was only three beloved Spidey actors that they chose. I also really like Neil Patrick Harris as Spider-Man, and I don't think he gets enough attention. But let's get to the real point of this video. The real meat. The real spider ass of this video. What if this game had one more level for each Spider-Man? A lot of these levels have villains I was surprised weren't in the original game, and interesting twists I think would have been cool for the plot of each individual level. I've also drawn up some pictures to get your mind racing about what these levels could look like. Alright, so that's pretty much it. What if there were four extra levels for each universe in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions? Alright, now let's get to the part of this video where I don't use a script and it makes zero sense the entire time. Alright, hello everyone, welcome to the non-scripted section of this video. Today, we're gonna start I say today. I say today because it's been a while since I kept working on this video. It's probably been about like three days, but I've been extra busy. But you don't care about that, because I'm just the YouTuber man who pumps out content for you. You don't care about my personal life or who I am, and that's very inconsiderate of you. But, we're gonna start with the Amazing Spider-Man levels, and the villain I chose was the Black Cat. I was super surprised the Black Cat wasn't in the game. I think that's like, honestly... One of the first villains you think of when you think of Spider-Man villains, she's probably top 10. And I th like I could think of some reasons for why they wouldn't pick her. Maybe they would have to increase the rating since she's like an awfully promiscuous character. Maybe they just couldn't think of anything for her to do since it was based off of the current 616 Amazing Spider-Man comics. Maybe she wasn't very evil at the time or maybe she was out of commission somehow, but I don't know. Here's like my pitch for a Black Cat level. Maybe Black Cat stumbles upon the artifact. Maybe it gets lost at a museum and Black Cat ends up taking it. And Peter has to go chase her around for the artifact. But the thing is, is that Black Cat's powers are amplified by the tablet fragment and she doesn't even know that. So she's inadvertently making this chase even harder for Peter, right? Like bad luck for Peter shoots through the roof. Like when Peter needs to reason with her and tell her why he needs the tablet fragment when he gets his hands on her, he can't do it because he keeps tripping on his tongue and messing up his words because of the bad luck. Maybe Peter accidentally ends up getting into a gunfight that's currently going on in the middle of chasing Black Cat because he stumbles into it and it's bad luck or whatever. Just a bunch of shit, a bunch of shit that gets in Peter's way and stops him from chasing after Black Cat. Now, I'm treating this as if I'm pitching it to the people developing the game. By the way, I figured I should mention that. So it's very important that these tasks don't seem annoying. Like, it's important that we do it in such a way that they don't feel like, oh my god, I was this close to catching her and now I have to do this bullshit, right? I, like, it has to be implemented in a way that's somewhat natural. And of course, you know, this is like a this is like a Black Cat level, so you have to have a chase section. And honestly, I feel like this game could have benefited from longer chase sections. I think maybe chasing Black Cat could have been one of the main focuses of the level. Like, chasing Black Cat from point A to point B, and maybe something happens along the way each time you stop but the chasing gets more and more complicated 
as the chase ensues towards the end of the level. And eventually, of course, you catch Black Cat, you get her, maybe she flirts with you. This was after one more day, so I don't know if Peter and MJ are still together. Like, this is 2010. I don't know. Maybe have her kiss and make out with him a little bit. I don't, I don't know, okay? I don't know. But I just think the Black Cat would have been a very cool villain for Spider-Man Shadow Dimensions, and I think her level would have gone something like that. And again, I'm sorry for not having more of a concise idea. I'm gonna be completely upfront with you guys, okay? I'm gonna be honest. I've like somewhat lost motivation to this video, but I'm gonna finish it, because I spent like a lot of time, a little bit of time on the art. Also, um, I'm gonna credit each of the maps I used for this, for this video. Right here, they're on screen. Here's all the credits. Uh, thank you to these Gmod map makers for making these maps so I could make it look like I'm a good artist when in reality I just took a screenshot of the video game and messed with the camera. Thank you. Hello, I'm back. It has literally been five days or something like that since I recorded the previous section of this video and today we are talking about the 2099 section of my proposal. So, I wanted to do something new this time. I didn't I didn't want to take a <coughs> sorry. I didn't want to take a currently existed 2099 character because I don't know enough about the 2099 comics to pick something. I also didn't want to make something up, which I will be doing on this list. I will make up a character and that's going to be in the next one for the noir section. But this time, I wanted to think a little bit outside of the box and have a villain from another universe accidentally come over to 2099's universe while seeking out the tablet fragment. And that villain is Aaron Davis, the Prowler from the Ultimate Universe, the same Ultimate Universe that's in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Now, this game came out in 2010. So, Miles Morales came out literally a year later, which kind of left me feeling a little disappointed because if the game like was starting development a little later, we would have gotten Miles Morales' pers first appearance in a video game much later. So I think it would have been way cooler if Miles was in the game, but we don't. So I'm proposing this as, hey, the Miles Morales run that's coming out a year from now that's probably currently in development has a central villain already, and it's the Prowler. So why don't we throw him into this game to make people excited for the new comic run? Because this game was heavily centered about what was going on in the comics. So, this is the story. So the Prowler is looking for the tablet fragment in the Ultimate Universe because it, it fetches a pretty penny or whatever. He's trying, he's in it for the money, right? So he finally gets his hands on it, and then the fragment does like all oh, this big old magic shit or whatever and it accidentally brings him into the 2099 universe. So for the entire level, you already have the tablet fragment with you at all times. 2099 is alerted to the presence of the tablet fragment through Madam Web and he finds the Prowler and the Prowler's like, yo, I don't know where the fuck I am, um, but I'm trying to go home. And Madam Web's like, this, this guy isn't from your universe or whatever. I have to bring him back. And we're just going to ignore that Madam Web has the ability to transport people from different dimensions because that's no fun. We'll just put this one in the end game where Madam Web is being held hostage by Mysterio so she can't do it or whatever. But so essentially this entire level is you trying to break Prowler into Alchemax so that you can use a time machine that they're currently developing and the same one that's being used in Spider-Man Edge of Time so that you can get Prowler back to his time while also getting the tablet fragment in the process. But, near the end of the level, Prowler double crosses you, because this is Aaron Davis. And comic book Aaron Davis is a huge asshole. So he's like, I'm gonna take the tablet fragment and get sent back home. So you have to fight Aaron Davis at the end of the level to get the tablet fragment and then send it back home. There could be a lot of cool things in this level, like you could have some 2099 stealth sections, maybe, but I, I wouldn't want to crimp on the noir thing that's currently going on. Uh, you could just, like, have, you could do cool team-ups with Prowler, where, like, you're fighting a whole bunch of guys in the same room, and you and Prowler are teaming up for special moves and such. It would just be, like, 
sort of an escort mission, but Prowler's not completely useless. He's actually pretty fun to team up with. So it's you and Prowler running through a level, trying to get to the end. And instead of being the villain, he's more like a villain that's also an ally to you. And that's my pitch for the Prowler 2099 level. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking through the ad. We're gonna get right back on track, but before we do that, I want to uh, address a little bit of the plot hole I made while recording yesterday. Uh, I realized that in order for the Prowler to use a machine to get back home, it wouldn't be a time machine. It would have to be a multi-dimensional dis transporter or whatever, because that would mean if he did use a time traveler to get back to his time, that would mean the ultimate universe would take place in the 2099 universe's past. So, uh, slightly editing that one. So, essentially, Prowler is just trying to find a dimensional transporter and not a time teleporter. So, we're gonna move on with the next level I have planned, the Noir level. Now, I'm showing the, the art a little too early, and that's because I have a fun little plan for this level. The villain in this level does not show up until the very end, and that's because he's supposed to be actually scary. I think the noir levels really just touched a little bit of the horror they could have really dipped into with some of their levels and their aesthetics. So I think for this level, I would really want to dive deep into that with the villain of this level, the lizard. So this entire level takes place within the sewer. Spider-Man has tracked down the tablet fragment somewhere within this deep sewer system. And there are also goons from whichever Spider-Man noir villain you'd want to put down there looking for the tablet fragment also. So while Spider-Man is trying to find this tablet fragment and track down goons, he's also being chased down by a mysterious villain that's big and scaly and monster-like. This version of the lizard, I want him to be scary and ominous. You don't really see him at first and that makes him more terrifying. You see his shadows scattered across the wall and you see his big red eyes staring at you from across the sewer tunnels. I want him to be big, I want him to be scary, and I want him to be this like oppressive force that you have to run away from sometimes. Like, maybe while you're taking down goons, the lizard will maybe stick his hand out of a sewer pipe and get rid of one of them for you. Not because he wants to help you, but because he senses an invader in this environment. And he's like, he's not really in it for himself. He's not really, or he is in it for himself, but he's not in it to be against you. He's just a guy in the sewer trying to get everyone else out because, like, he lives there. So he's gonna do whatever he can. So that means he's gonna take down the goons you're fighting and if it comes down to it, he's gonna take down you. So he's gonna be, he's sort of just gonna be the scary oppressive force that I don't really have an idea for. Also, I did have help with this idea. Uh, Mr. Jonathan, I'm gonna put his Instagram on screen. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Um, yeah, that's essentially all the ideas I have laid out for this level. I don't really have anything else planned out. I mean, maybe you and the lizard can reconcile at the end, and maybe the lizard, I don't know, kind of realizes that Spider-Man isn't trying to be an oppressive force in his home, and he just wants the tablet fragment. Or maybe once Spider-Man gets close enough to the lizard, and the lizard finds the tablet fragment, they do end up fighting. And I mean, villain, this is a villain level, so... I guess you kind of do have to fight him, so forget all that rec reconciling shit. Beat the fuck out of that big old lizard man and take that tablet from him. So, yeah, that's essentially the entire plot of this level. Some cool, fun stealth les that. Some cool, fun stealth levels in a sewer with a big, scary monster chasing you sometimes and helping you sometimes. And then you fight him at the end, and that's it. That's the entire level. I'm, again, I'm really surprised that they didn't do a sewer level with the lizard in this game. All right, home stretch. This is the last level. Last level we're doing, boys. Last level. My audacity has some, for some reason, it has split the audio into two tracks. I have no clue why. 
we're gonna roll with it. I guess. For the ultimate Spider-Man level and for the final level of this video, we are going to be having the ultimate Spider-Man in the symbiote outfit face off against the Kingpin. Now, I wanted to do the Kingpin because the Kingpin is one of the biggest fucking, like, opposers for Ultimate Spider-Man. Like, Kingpin was such an asshole to Ultimate Peter Parker, and he was always pulling something out of his ass to get a one-up on Peter. He was just devious, and I think that... But then again, I have not read every single book of ASM, so I can't say this for sure, but I think in Ultimate Spider-Man, I think here is where you get one of the most fleshed out versions of the relationship between Spider-Man and the Kingpin. Because in this book, it truly feels like they hate each other, and there's no clear winner whenever they fight. The Kingpin wins, Spider-Man wins sometimes. Sometimes the Kingpin absolutely destroys Spider-Man, and sometimes Peter absolutely destroys the Kingpin. It's an unending back and forth, and this level takes place in prison. Now, I wanted it to take place in prison, so it could be a fun little reference to that one fun little time where uh, Peter nearly beat Kingpin to death in the Amazing Universe. Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. Get up. And also I thought this would be cool for you to see how much control Kingpin has. So this entire prison is essentially against you. Guards, prisoners, there is no one in here to help you. And it is Peter walking into this prison as one, one man, one boy, and defeating almost anyone. Because no one in this prison is on his side because they're all controlled by the Kingpin. I don't really know what the plot for this level is going to be. I just know it's going to be Kingpin in prison. Peter's breaking in because he's because Kingpin has somehow got his hands on a tablet fragment despite being in jail. Maybe you have to fight another Ultimate Spider-Man villain like Shocker before you can make your way to the Kingpin. You're having to fight like guards, prisoners, all these people just so you can get to the Kingpin at the end of the level and finally defeat him. All of this takes place within jail. Like maybe there's a scene where Peter is locked into a like high capacity jail cell and he has to find a way to break out or just anything, anything you can do with Peter in this prison. I really want this level to seem oppressive. I want Peter to feel truly alone in this level and to really have no one but Madam Web on his side. I know that's usually how it is anyway, but I want the feeling of Peter being alone against this massive strong force to be more present in this level more than any other level in this game. Like, huge horde battles where you have to use rage mode to survive, pretty much, and it's just a, it's just a big, tough prison fight the entire way through, and that's my whole pitch for the level. It's, it's honestly kind of a simple level, if you ask me. Alright, that, uh... That about wraps up this video. I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of points during the editing of this video, in the production of this video in general, where I just straight up took really long breaks. I think I had the idea for this video about three weeks ago, and I have been working on it on and off for about three weeks. But production is wrapped up, the video's all done, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, remember, please check the link in my description if you want to buy those Fighting Heroes web shooters. I get uh, I get a portion of your purchase. I really appreciate that. I also really appreciate you guys coming in and voting with the community tab. I really appreciate you guys telling me what you want. Um, a lot of the time, I'm really questioning what I want to do with my content. And I think when you guys tell me what you want, it kind of helps sway my, my decisions. I've been thinking about branching out and every now and then doing a video that isn't spider-man related but still within the superhero genre uh maybe i'll take a poll from you guys to see what kind of fandoms you like so 
that I could figure out how well a video would do under that fandom in the future with you guys. Um, like, I was thinking about doing a video on how well certain superhero costumes have aged. I think that would have been a good video, and maybe me, myself, redesigning a lot of them. Because uh, I was thinking about it, you know, Spider-Man's costume aged probably better than any other superhero costume ever made. Like, of course, it's overgone, like, slight tweaks, but I think it looks the most similar to the Spider-Man we have now compared to the Spider-Man back then. But, of course, you know, I'm just shooting ideas. A lot of the time, when I think of an idea for a video, I'll write it down, I'll, you know, pass it over in my head, and I'll maybe be like, yeah, you know what, that is a good idea. Like, I wrote something down yesterday where it was like, superhero movies guy villain in a suit syndrome you know like making a video about how a lot of the times sometimes super villains just wear power suits or like regular outfits and i think that's boring like francis from deadpool 2 and like covering like i don't know i just want to cover niche ass topics in the superhero sphere that maybe just aren't spider-man related that's the end of my spiel thank you all so much for watching this video uh, this is sort of like the soapbox section of my videos whenever it comes down to the end. Uh, make sure you follow my links, they're all on screen, and remember to go purchase a pair of web shooters from Spiting Heroes if you would like to, using my link, because then it would mean I get a percent off of your purchase. If you don't use the link, I do not get a percent off of your purchase. Thank you guys so much. Again, we're about to hit 500, or not 500, we're about to hit 5,000 subscribers, and I appreciate every single one of you. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys.